Reboot. Recaffeinate? At night. How's it going, everyone? Welcome uh, to another episode of Reboot Recaffeinate at night. So we're eating cookies. Um, yeah, <laughs> my name is Antonio. I'm Gianna. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna start off this Halloween episode with a simple question we ask every episode: What games have you been playing this week? Oh uh, well, I've been playing Guitar Hero, the first one, actually, um, with a group, video game group I'm in at school, mm -hmm. um, at my university. We were playing Guitar Hero, so it was actually kind of cool. We had this entire room set up for a music theme meeting, so we had a version of DDR um, ready for people to play, and then we had Guitar Hero. And it was interesting playing it because it's been years since I played it. I was part of the high school group who went to parties and played, and it was super cool. Um, but I haven't played it since. So it was funny because when I first started on the guitar, I forgot that you had to strum the little knot thingy. Really that, weird. That, that, thingy. that thingy. Um, I forgot they had to do that to play it, so I was just like hitting the buttons. I'm like, why? Am I just really bad at this? And no, I, I, I once I got the hang of it, apparently I actually beat the guy I was playing, so I'm pretty proud of that. Burn! <laughs> um, and yeah, it was really fun. It was nostalgic, and I don't know. And of course, you know, the uh, Michael just put up a, uh, this past week. He put up a post about the newest Guitar Hero, so it's it'll be interesting to see how this kind of pairs with basically the memories of high school. Yeah, I remember playing the game in, in high school and just being really competitive about like, you know, who's the best at playing the Dragon Force song on <laughs> Guitar Hero 3 and just really going at it. Um, that's good, I'm glad it's still fun. Yeah, it's, it was nice, it was it was pretty good. How about you? What have you been playing? Um, I just beat the first Uncharted game. Um, I'm, I've, I've been picking away at the Uncharted collection for the PlayStation 4. Um, wow, Uncharted 1 is a very good game. I forgot how uh, intense it was. <laughs> um, every Uncharted game has some sort of, I don't want to say mythological, it's some sort of... What's supernatural. Supernatural, yeah, some sort of supernatural occurrence. And this, is, this game probably has the creepiest one. Like these weird sort of running zombies characters. Spoilers, by the way, for a game that's almost 10 years old, I believe. And yeah, that game is really difficult. Um, enemies are bullet sponges, so that's kind of frustrating. But uh, it was definitely really fun to play right now, I'm playing Uncharted 2. And you can just uh, really see the huge step forward, not just in terms of graphically how the game looks, but in terms of strong dialogue, in terms of better shooting like set pieces. Same, the same type of enemies, but, yeah. Yeah. What have you been playing, Nobby? Interesting. Uh, nice. Alright guys, so our topic for the week is scary games. Um, particularly, I guess, what we like about scary games, what we personally think makes a good scary game, and kind of talking about that. So Antonio, what makes a good scary game for you? Um, personally, I'm never, I've never been a fan of games that have, um, you know, things popping out at you. Mm -hmm. Um, that sort of goes the same with, um, any sort of haunted mansion that you can go in during this, uh, the Halloween time. Um, specifically I like a game that has a dark setting, some great atmosphere, um, a great soundtrack. Um, great audio. Um, when I reviewed Alien Isolation uh, earlier this year, I gave it what, a 6.5 out of 10? Yeah, it was like a year ago actually. So, that game was frustrating because for it did everything I wanted in a horror game and then it did everything I didn't want. Um, it relied too heavily upon uh, the alien being sort of like this big difficult creature uh, sort of coming out of nowhere to kill you. But at the same time, the game had great element moments, uh, atmospheric moments, 
where you're walking through this these very tight tunnels, you're walking mm -hmm. through the spaceship, and that was great. So that game was mixed, but I believe Soma for the PlayStation 4 and PC probably did that better. Like, what did you think? Um, well, actually, I have to agree with a lot of that. I mean, first, just full disclosure, I'm not a scary games player. Mm -hmm. I don't like dramas, I don't like scary movies, because they freak me out. Um, and as a already high-strung grad student, more stress usually doesn't work out for me. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I have seen you play video games um, that are scary, and I've played a few of my own when I was younger, like Bioshock. And I do agree, I'm not a big fan of the whole popping out at you thing, um, just because it gets, it gets a bit old, it's a cheap scare. Um, I, Alien Isolation, after a while it was kind of comical. Um, of just like hiding from this alien, it was kind of ended up trudging along actually because it was the same mechanic of you're alone and you're powerless and you're walking and there's an alien over and over. Then there's that ridiculous, stupid locker scene. The locker opening. Where you closing. rush in and like it just, it breaks up the atmosphere. And that's one thing I feel that a good scary game needs to have that atmosphere. Not so much, I mean, yes, it needs to be scary and have that kind of scary atmosphere, but it also just has to. I guess the idea we're walking around is, yes, this is a game, but I need to be removed from the idea that I'm playing a game. Yeah. Uh, in moments like Alien Isolation with like the same locker animations, it's like, okay, this feels like a video game. But with Soma, uh, you're walking through you know, these hallways and you see a light and you know you need to go there even though you really don't want to. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think even what's scary about Soma is watching it being played is just that the sheer atmosphere is creepy. The music really combines well with the lighting and just the fact that you're dealing with these, I mean, I guess spoilers if you haven't played it, but these weird robotic things that are kind of alive or you think are alive and you're kind of torturing them. So it's psychologically uncomfortable and terrifying as a result until you find yourself just getting really tense. So immersion, basically. Exactly. And that actually reminds me of a game that I um, got home, which is not supposed to be a scary game. I mean, it's actually a pretty groundbreaking game that has really interesting themes. But when you first play it, like you come home after being away to this, it's like stormy and it, everything's like not well lit and you're alone in this house and you have no idea what's going on. Yeah, you don't know where your family is. And so there's just like this incorporation of music and lighting and I mean, at first you think it is a horror game because... And no spoilers here for this game. Okay, no spoilers. No spoilers. It's not a horror game, but it sets itself uh, in so many situations that screams, okay, you're gonna encounter a ghost or something crazy. Or something, something and crazy. really the ghost ends up being metaphorical, I guess? I don't know. It, but we're not gonna spoil no, that because yeah, it worry. needs to be played. It, I highly recommend it because, yeah, it seems like a scary game. Like, you feel like, oh my gosh, I looked. I just looked at this piece of paper about this one guy and I'm going to turn around, there's gonna be something behind me. But it doesn't do that. And yet, you still feel invested, you still feel scared, and then you feel compelled to know more. And I think that's the key, is not just scaring you so you stop playing, mm -hmm. like so scary, but scaring you enough to where you're like, okay, this is terrifying, but I have to investigate. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Soma does, actually, where it's like, okay, I feel like I just tortured these people. I'm terrified, and this is creepy and uncomfortable, but I really want to get to the bottom of this mystery. Yeah. And I think that's what makes a good scary game. Again, it all kind of comes back to immersion, mm -hmm. and the gameplay, like the video gameness, should never really get in the way to make it a good scary game. Um, Bioshock, for example, oh. for the for the first hour, an excellent horror game because you're trying to figure out where you are. You're not worried about, you know, do I need to pick up this weapon? Do I need to worry about this ammo? And yes, there are moments where like survival games, like The Last of Us, where you're trying to scavenge and. And, and hold as many ammo as possible. That can be scary. Mm -hmm. and that can be tense because it's using the gameplay mechanic to add a level of stress. But there are moments where, you know, that will get in the way. Again, yeah. like with Alien Isolation. And to some people, uh, again, Bioshock. Well, yeah, actually, I stopped playing Bioshock um, when I first started playing it just because the jump scares got to be too much for me. Um, and I mean, it's just because I was just so constantly tense that that fear, that tenseness overcame my desire to know more about this story. So is that just... Would you say that's an element of the game being too scary or, 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 or something getting in the way? Like, um, I don't know. I, I don't want to say it's too scary. I think the key really comes in storytelling and if you put the gameplay first. 
So Bioshock, there's a lot of emphasis on shooting things. I mean, there is a really intense, crazy storyline element and I can appreciate it for being an amazing game with like, I actually want to do a series on this in the future where I actually investigate the historical themes of Bioshock. But the fact is that there's just so many so many things that are just emphasized, okay, where do you have to, you have to attack all of these splicers and things like that. I would say that, I would not say that you should put gameplay first in terms of... Well, well, that's what I'm saying, a good scary game should not put gameplay play first, okay. it should put the story first. Because if you put gameplay first, um, of like, oh, we're showing you, oh, well, you can how you can interact with the world and things. Like it can't get in the way. It, it gets in the way. And I think that's in part where the issue comes in. Like, say for Alien Isolation, I think they got too focused on the gameplay of dealing with the alien AI, um, where it just became repetitious and frustrating after a while, as opposed to... It was basically, let's show everybody this cool new technology with dealing with this AI for the alien to like track you down, versus let's have this interesting story that can also scare people, that incorporates this but doesn't dominate it. So I think that's honestly the key. Cool. Thanks again for watching. Um, again, we are reboot, recaffeinate <laughs> for all. Things Reboot Gamers, head to therebootgamers.com. That was a good moment, Navi. Um, we have a Facebook, we have a Twitter, we have a YouTube, we have a Tumblr, we have a SoundCloud, and, the iTunes. and we have an iTunes. We have a weekly podcast uh, called Reboot Radio. Um, and this has been our Halloween episode. It's been fun. So it's been Reboot Recapitate at night. Yeah, at night, yeah. I mean, you can't really tell. <laughs> it's nighttime. Yeah, it's nighttime. It's like midnight. Yeah, it is like midnight. So. You should probably get to sleep. Um, that smells really gross in space. So, until next week, uh, you know, stay. Caffeinated? Stay caffeinated. Alright, guys. How is it? Very good. Really? Yeah. I was worried. <laughs> it's like a rock. Oh, mine's good. <laughs>